My name is Stephen Upton and in this short film I'm going to take you on a tour of the Bayonvold trenches, Bavarian trenches. They're situated just northwest of the Belgian town that was commonly known to the British Army as White Sheet. As you can see from how it's spelt here, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. What is of particular interest of this area is it is believed that Adolf Hitler as a young Lance Corporal Gaifritter in the Bavarian Army actually not only served in these trenches but it's where he was awarded the first of his two Iron Crosses. Now from this trench map our takeoff point you can see is there and the trenches themselves we're filming is just there. The area of woodland marked on this map in front of the trenches has long since been removed and is now just simply open fields. Directly in front of us, in the middle of the field where that clump of trees are, is Kruner British Military Cemetery. And I was told on a guided tour of this area, it was somewhere around there in no man's land that Hitler won his medal. That hill is Mount Kemmel, that's Kruner Cemetery. And that farm there, around it, there are three large mine craters were detonated, but they may be the subject of a later film. So we're actually flying directly above the German trenches, not the ones we're going to film, but where there would have been, and running along this field, you can see in the middle distance a track, and then beyond that, a field with a depression in it, with a faint line running, that's roughly where the British front lines were. The cemetery is somewhere in the middle of no man's land. And I was told by a, a tour guide that uh, Hitler won his Iron Cross somewhere in no man's land there, bringing in a wounded officer. The brown field directly in front of us was woodland at the time these trenches were dug. And these trenches have been restored from 1915 German trench maps. So they're not actually the frontline German trenches at that time. They would have been in the, the brown field to the left. These are more second line trenches. They've been completely restored. And if you're a visitor in the area, you can gain access to them. There's also a 17 metre mine shaft there that the Germans dug to counter British mining. This field here, the brown field, that's where the wood would have extended and where the front line trenches would have been. Because the British were in low ground, it was very easier, very easy for us to tunnel under the German trenches and detonate various mines. You can see there on the left, the circular part at the end of a sap that's the mine shaft entrance. Because this is on fairly high ground compared to where the British are, it's, these, these trenches stay quite dry. The British are down in the valley where there's a stream and probably would have been extremely wet trenches. The Germans also generally built their trenches to a far higher standard and that's because their policy was, we've captured this, we're here to stay, it's your job to remove us. Whereas the British and French policy was, you've got our land, we're going to attack you, so we're not intending to stay here very long. So they didn't go to the same trouble to build the trenches as robust as the German ones. Also, I think higher command didn't want the British soldiers getting too comfortable. Directly ahead of us there is the village of St. Eloy, and there are some craters there, and they were captured by the Canadians in some very fierce fighting. And the land directly to the left of that would have been no man's land. And where you can see a line of trees there, that is following a stream. And the British trenches, second line trenches, were along there. The farm in the middle is Sniper's Barn. That's Sniper's Barn, and that features in all the trench maps throughout the war. That is approximately where the British frontline trenches were, and the second line trenches there. But of course, these moved around quite a lot over the four years the front line was here. 
There's the British front line trench. At the bottom, the wood where the German trenches are. The second line of trenches, the stream just behind. And that's where the film where we're filming the German trenches. And you can see Sniper's Barn at the top. There's Sniper's Barn smack bang in the middle. At the bottom left there where a car just crossed, that's known as Rifle Bridge. The track that runs across from left to right now where the wheat field ends, that's where the British second line trench was on most maps. But a lot depends on what stage of the war you look at. But for most of the war, there was trenches all along here. Where the stream is, you can see that meandering across from left to right. I was told by the tour guide that is the site of the original British second line trenches. However, the trench maps that I have uh, don't seem to confirm this. Although there were British trenches running very, very close to that. On all the trench maps I have from 1915 to 1918, that was a stream. As we pan around, the British front line, or sorry, the second line trenches roughly followed the line of that stream. And the village in the distance there is Vormiesel. If you're Belgian and listening to this, I apologise for my terrible pronunciation. We're flying more or less above the British second line trenches, swinging back round towards St. Eloy. Because it's a hazy day, uh, we couldn't see Eeps at all. That was round to the left. And we're swinging back round towards the village of White Sheet. There you see the church there on a slight rise in the ground. That's White Sheet. And the wood, Bayern wood, Bavarian wood. Now the brown field, that was also part of the wood during the war. And the German front line trenches would have been in that wood. The British front line roughly halfway across this wheat field running left to right. So you can see the width of no man's land was roughly half the width of this wheat field. And the German trenches were on higher ground than the British, which was pretty typical. And the German trenches would have run across that brown field and then moving away from us because the small cemetery on the right was in no man's land. Now we're moving back to the wood and get a different look at the trenches. You can see just down on the right there, there's a cover, a cage cover over the mine shaft. And I understand that's about 17 metres deep. There was a terrific amount of mining and countermining activity in most places along the Western Front, particularly where the land would allow it. They were flying directly over the mine shaft now. The Germans digging right down so they could put listening devices and listen for British mining and also to detonate counter mines, detonate what they call camouflets, to counter British mining. But these trenches have been restored quite meticulously. It's believed that Adolf Hitler served in these trenches. He was a runner throughout virtually the entire war. He was granted the Iron Cross first class and second class and it is believed that he was in this area that he won his Iron Cross second class. And also it's reported that he visited these trenches, this area, in 1940 after the Germans captured both Belgium and France. I was also told by the tour guide that at some point in the war he was wounded and taken into the crypt, which was a casualty clearing station, underneath the church at Messines. And you can visit that crypt if you're in the area. So 
So we're looking now, flying above no man's land, looking towards the wood with the trenches, and the German front line would have swung round here, following roughly halfway across that brown field, incorporating that copse there, which was some kind of chapel at the time, and the two farms in the distance were German strong points. They were, it was a small salient, you can see Mount Kemmel, but that farm there, there are three mine craters there. We're over the middle of no man's land, and then that dip in the field in front of us there was roughly the British front line. Now, this last part of the film, I've kept it in, not because it's anything to do with why I was there, but the gold wing that you see in the middle. I promised that I would keep it in the film um, because they were members of the British Legion Riders branch, which I am myself, and I did promise them I'd keep a picture of their bike in the film. I hope you've enjoyed it, it's been informative. If ever you're in the area, it's worth a visit, near White Sheet in Belgium, the Bay and Wall Trenches. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if the riders of that wing are watching, happy and safe riding, and I hope you enjoyed the remainder of your holiday. Hope to bump into you sometime at a Legion event or fundraiser somewhere. Thank you.